What exactly happened inside of the Idaho 4 house and what were the exact sequence of events of how Brian Koberger did it? Let's piece together all the evidence and their surviving roommates' accounts along with criminal psychology to finally reveal how it all sadly unfolded. Now. Let's get started. According to the Brian Koberger arrest affidavit, the two surviving roommates, Dylan and Bethany, went to sleep alone in their respective bedrooms after they reportedly got back to the house at 1 a.m. When this Idaho 4 story first broke, we all presumed their surviving roommates, Dylan and Bethany, slept peacefully on the first floor after they got back at 1 a.m., while Brian wreaked havoc on the second and third floors of their house. However, with the information in the arrest affidavit, we found out that was not at all the case. There was one surviving surviving housemate Bethany sleeping on the first floor, and the other surviving housemate Dylan was sleeping on the second floor. Therefore, this breaks the previously assumed commonality of bedroom floor location equals safety from Brian. So bedroom location or bedroom floor was not a factor in who sadly got murdered. In criminal psychology, it's always helpful to compare commonalities among groups in a unique situation to have a better sense of what could have happened. If bedroom floor was not a commonality between who lived and who died, what appears to be the main commonality then? It seems to be the time they got back to the house. Everyone who went back to the house earlier and apparently went to sleep earlier lived. However, everyone who got back to the house later and went to sleep later sadly died. As we said in a prior analysis, it appears Madison and Kaylee were possibly targeted, but at least Kaylee was targeted. Therefore, Brian seemed to have a set target or targets, and the others were sadly collateral damage to him to keep his identity a secret. However, what Brian Koberger apparently did not know is that Dylan heard a lot of what was going on, and Brian allegedly walked right past her. She informed police of all of this in her statement. After I read through this very curious piece of the arrest affidavit, we'll break it down, but as I read it, don't just pay attention to what she says, also pay attention to what she doesn't say in her account. Dylan stated she was awoken at approximately 4 a.m. by what she stated sounded like Kaylee playing with her dog in one of the upstairs bedrooms, which was located on the third floor. A short time later, Dylan said she heard who she thought was Kaylee say something to the effect of, there's someone here. A review of records obtained from a forensic download of Xana's phone showed that this could have also been Xana as her cellular phone indicated she was likely awake using the TikTok app at approximately 4.12 a.m. Dylan stated she looked out of her bedroom but did not see anything when she heard the comment about someone being inside the house. Dylan stated she opened her door a second time when she heard what she thought was crying coming from Xana's room. Dylan then said she heard a male voice say something to the effect of, it's okay, I'm going to help you. At approximately 4.17 a.m., a security camera located at 1112 King Road, a residence immediately to the northwest of 1122 King Road picked up a distorted audio of what sounded like voices or a whimper followed by a loud thud. A dog can be heard barking numerous times at 4.17 a.m. The security camera is less than 50 feet from the west wall of Xana's bedroom. Dylan stated she opened her door a third time after she heard the crying and saw a figure clad in black clothing and a mask that covered the person's mouth and nose walking towards her. Dylan described the figure as 5 foot 10 inches or taller, male, not very muscular, but athletically built with bushy eyebrows. The male walked past Dylan as she stood in a frozen shock face. The male walked towards the back sliding glass door. Dylan locked herself in her room after seeing the male. Dylan did not state that she recognized the male. This leads investigators to believe the murderer left the scene. Now let's break this down to figure out what seemed to have happened in the house that night. The affidavit confirms that Dylan was in fact sleeping at 4 a.m. What's even more curious than what Dylan said in her statement to police is what she did not say. Dylan did not say she heard a scream. Did you notice that? Someone surprises someone coming at them with a knife, especially two young girls, they will typically scream or yell. Maybe Dylan slept through the screams but was awakened by what sounded like Kaylee playing with her dog, whispers and crying. Of course not. There apparently weren't any screams. And surely screams would have been picked up by the neighbor's security camera, which was so sensitive that it picked up other noises in their house. Therefore, this indicates they were taken completely off guard and didn't see Brian come into their room with a knife. For them not to scream, he would have had to sneak from the dark hallway into their dark bedroom. They apparently had no chance to yell or scream. At around 4 a.m., Dylan said she was awakened by what sounded like Kaylee playing with her dog upstairs. But given the timeline, it seems like that was when Brian was attacking Madison and Kaylee. And when Dylan heard what she thought was Kaylee playing with her dog upstairs, that was possibly Brian maneuvering while committing the acts. We can consider the possibility that Brian was under their bed or in their closet and entered the house when 
when they were all out and was lying in wait for the perfect time to strike. But police have Brian's alleged vehicle first sighted that early morning in the area at 3.29 a.m., well after the housemates got back to the house at 2 a.m. from their night out. Kaylee and Madison arrived home at approximately 1.45 a.m. after visiting a local bar and a street food vendor. When their food comes, Kaylee takes a short video to post on social media and they walk off together. Therefore, Brian must have snuck into their house and then specifically Madison and Kaylee's bedroom when he saw an opportunity when everyone was in their bedrooms after 4 a.m. We know this because if Brian entered the house while people were in the common areas, there would have been yelling, screaming, and police would have been called. Dylan said she thought she heard Kaylee say, there's someone here. However, that seemed to have been Xana who was on the same floor as Dylan. So it's more likely to have been Xana saying that to her boyfriend Ethan because it would have been much more difficult for Dylan to hear something whispered all the way from upstairs. Also, we know that Xana was awake then because she had a DoorDash delivery at 4 a.m. and records show Xana was on the TikTok app at 4.12 a.m. Piecing it all together, this is what seemed to have happened. After sadly murdering Madison and Kaylee on the third floor, Brian was making his way down the wooden creaky staircase. Xana, who was wide awake at 4 a.m., heard some odd noise when he entered the house, and then aggressive movement throughout the house, including upstairs in Madison and Kaylee's bedroom. When Brian was coming down the stairs, Xana alerted her boyfriend Ethan with what Dylan heard as, there's someone here. Dylan briefly opens her door the first time and doesn't see anything because Brian is slowly and quietly making his way down the staircase. Upon Xana's concern, Ethan checks it out, leaving Xana alone in her bedroom. Ethan eventually briefly spots Brian, but Brian is ready to quickly strike with his knife. After Xana heard brief and sudden movement, she apprehensively walks partially into the dark common area and was immediately surprised captured by Brian with his knife. Brian tries to bring Xana into her bedroom by knife point to avoid possibly being spotted by the other housemates. As Brian has Xana captured by knife point, she's crying in fear for her life, and possibly also because she knows Ethan was incapacitated by Brian. Which that crying coming from Xana's room causes Dylan to open her door a second time and does not see anything because Brian already took Xana by knife threat into her room. In fear that Xana will scream and blow his cover, he says the first promising thing to come to mind. It's okay, I'm gonna help you. To keep Xana quiet until he has her safely out of view into her room. Brian possibly closes or partially closes Xana's bedroom door behind him in hopes to reduce the sound of what he is about to do next, escaping to the ears of other housemates. He then commits his fourth and final murder in hopes of keeping his identity secret to get away with it. This is when their neighbor's security camera picks up the audio of what is likely Xana's whimpering Brian's muffled voice, Xana possibly muffled something back to him in that recording, and the loud thud was possibly Brian letting Xana free fall to the floor. Dylan opens her bedroom door the third and final time and sees Brian walk past her to exit the house in the dark through the back sliding glass door on the second floor. After exerting all that energy and adrenaline, Brian was likely unaware Dylan spotted him, but was completely focused on getting out of the house after likely murdering more people than he initially expected. Dylan locks her door as a precaution since she thinks that there's still people hanging out in the house, which locking her bedroom door would give her additional peace of mind to more easily fall back to sleep. Some have asked, why didn't Dylan call 911 immediately? We don't know for sure, but it's likely she didn't think anything nefarious was going on and could have just thought that Brian was someone one of the housemates brought back while they were out because we have to remember that Dylan got back earlier and went to sleep earlier than most of the housemates. Additionally, since Dylan saw Brian on the second floor and she knew Ethan, who was staying with Xana, was also on the second floor, and Brian, when she spotted him, could have been one of their friends or someone Madison and Kaylee was hanging out with that evening. We must also remember, this is rural Idaho. The last murder took place almost eight years ago in that town. It probably didn't even cross her mind that it was anything like what happened. When the sun rises, Dylan doesn't get up until very late in the morning because it's Sunday and her sleep was disturbed with all those odd noises from around 4 a.m. The other surviving roommate, Bethany, probably didn't go upstairs because she's all set downstairs on the first floor when Dylan and finally wakes up and looks for Xana in her bedroom and finds her remains. Dylan then calls 911, crying, hyperventilating, and can't speak to the 911 operator. It's possible she even fainted due to her hyperventilating. Therefore, the 911 operator called it into police as just someone unconscious at the house. On the morning of November 13th at 11.58 a.m., a 911 call was placed. <clears throat> the call reported an unconscious person. The call originated from inside the residence 
and a surviving roommate's cell phone was used. Based on what we know so far from police, the evidence, and the arrest affidavit, this seems to be the likely sequence of events of what sadly happened in the Idaho 4 house during those early morning hours of Sunday, November 13th, 2022. Now in the comments, why do you think or don't think Brian Koberger is guilty? Let everyone know in the comments below. Subscribe for more.